computer. Well, welcome, Luna. Hi, welcome. Or welcome to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, welcome to you too. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I'm, yeah. <laughs> welcome to the show. Welcome to the people watching the show. Welcome to all the people about to be fans. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell people who you are and what you do? My name is Luna, and I am a heavy metal vocalist, and I'm also a full-time leather worker. Yes, very popular designs. I first saw your leather work, because actually that's how I found you first, uh, personally. Um, somebody had one of your heart belts on, and I was like, oh, that is so cute. Where did you get that? And that's how I found you. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> And then I found your band Angel Fury, but that's that is just me being late to the party because you have been in bands besides Angel Fury as well. Yeah, um, it's been a long journey, and I'm like I always feel well. First of all, before I get started, I wanted to thank you for even putting all of this together because I know it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort, you know, combing through all the music, setting up these interviews and actually like waiting for us to get ready and get on it, recording it, putting it up on YouTube. So um, thank you so much for taking the time to give us the platform to speak and for people to know us. What you're doing is incredible. So much for saying that. It's really my pleasure. I think it's a lot of fun and I it comes very naturally to me, so it doesn't feel like much work at all. It's pretty fun. I just get to like hang out with like a new friend every day. <laughs> it's awesome for me. And then like I think really most of the work goes into the hair and makeup, honestly. And like this. Okay, this is I'm I need to put the lipstick on. <laughs> the first couple episodes, I was like, wow, I look so good, and I'm so like energized from like doing this interview I guess I'll go get some Mexican food or something and then like I like look all glamorous and I have all this people energy and I go and then the bartender's like you should have three drinks and then it goes downhill fast no it's bad it happened it happened like three times in a row and I kept going to different bars to like avoid a bartender that would start giving me free shots and then they just all started doing it and so I have like had to learn that after the episode, I just have to take off the makeup and go to bed. <laughs> You're just too cute. Too fucking cute. <laughs> fucking me up. <laughs> you all this cuteness, I just don't know what to do with it. <laughs> I gotta take it off. Get the cute off. <laughs> you know what, actually? One of my favorite makeup looks from you is when you did the blue eyeshadow because I love blue eyeshadow. Blue and purple are like my shit. So when you do like the, the baby blue, ugh, love it. You know, so I want to give you free shots too. Uh, I love your green lipstick makeup look. Oh, you know what? I haven't done that in years, so, oh, I'll so cool. and I should bring that back. <laughs> yeah, I saw that picture, and I was like, "Oh man, she is rocking that! That like you really pulled that off." Yeah, I'm like um, before the hair, I used to do the green lipstick. <laughs> shame on us for talking about hair and makeup as soon as we saw the video. I, I saw your interview with Amy and the same thing. You guys were like talking about hair. <laughs> but hey, we're girls. Like you love us for it. So you know, and then I had this other thought today about how like I have become aware that guys watch this channel and like follow my Instagram to stay up to date with this channel. And I think it's like some kind of voyeurism because they're like, oh, well, that's what these girls do when they're alone and they're talking to each other. And we do talk about hair and makeup once we're alone. We do. And clothes and shoes. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about bags and belts. And <laughs> yeah. But we also talk about music and we talk about bands. We we talk about it all, okay? So. Yeah, we're just not talking about sex. Full circle. Yeah. So. <laughs> Dream on, boys. So, um for watching the episodes too um, yeah. okay so when did you first realize that you loved rock and metal music and you wanted to create more of it oh well it's actually like two separate um occasions um you know I didn't really grow up you know a lot of people be like oh you know my dad liked 
no, I was watching Melly's interview. She's like, my dad loved Iron Maiden. I'm like, oh my God, that's so cool. Like my parents hated anything related to rock. <laughs> they thought it was the devil. <laughs> so I grew up listening to like, um, you know, regional Mexican music, which, you know, they love. And I love too. And also um, when I was growing up, it was like all about like Spice Girls and Britney Spears and Destiny's Child. And I remember those, I had those CDs, Battery Boys. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was like in middle school when I was like a little angry kid and I actually got into punk first. So, you know, I would listen to, um, the Misfits, the Addicts, the Ramones, um, GBH, and it really helped me like channel some of that aggression. Um, but it wasn't until I heard, um, I believe it was Judas Priest and Slayer where I was like, whoa, what is this? Cause it's like. 20 times more aggressive but also melodic and I I fucking love melody and um Judas Priest since then has been like my number one band and um so you know just my teenage years I just grew up trying to discover as many bands as I could and diving deeper and deeper and deeper and um but it wasn't until 2015 that I decided to actually make music and I first started off just by like going to a lot of festivals and I would make my own clothing and my own accessories. And, you know, I would just sing along to all my fucking favorite bands. And um, one girl that I knew at that point, I didn't know her, but I remember we were watching a girl school at the Whiskey Go Go. And um, at the end of the show, she's like, hey, you actually have a pretty good voice. Like, have you ever considered singing? And I was like, no, <laughs> like, I'm just a fan. <laughs> like, I'm just like, fucking out. But it kind of like sparked something in my brain where I'm like, hmm, like, I'm not giving myself enough credit. Mm -hmm. So um, I did get two of my girlfriends were like, hey, let's start a band. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, my two girlfriends, you know, they, they didn't follow through. They had other priorities. Um, you know, one of them had a kid and the other one um, was going to school full time and working. So, but I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do it regardless. So 2015 is when I really decided like, hey, like I want to fucking make music for the masses because there's nothing more unifying in this fucking world than music. And I love being in concerts and festivals and shows. And you don't even know the person next to you, but if you know the song or you enjoy the song together, it's like automatically we're best friends. Yeah. And that's why I decided to to do it for my love of it and for the camaraderie camaraderie. And um I'm like, hey, maybe I can do it. <laughs> you sure fucking can. Oh man, that is um a, like a true story right there about uh it's like when you first start and you've got a friend that's like, I want to start a band with you. And then what happens, right? I'll tell you, mm -hmm. I had this friend April in middle school and I told her that I was learning bass and I really liked it. She told me she was in a band. These were the AIM days. So mm -hmm. I, she told me who the drummer was. So I got his AIM name and I was like, hey, I'm in your band. Did it work out? <laughs> she was like, I'm not in a band. I don't play drums. And so she had like made this whole thing up because of the camaraderie. She wanted to be friends. And she was like, if I just tell her that I'm in a band, she'll be my friend and call me. And she was right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, girl, you didn't even want to tell me that I'll be your friend regardless. <laughs> it was like, and you know what? We actually ended up being best friends like all through high school and getting into so much nonsense together. But <laughs> it was like a pretty yeah. good like friendship story. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, so if your music were a movie soundtrack, what would the movie be about? Um, you know, I actually did have this vision. So um, just a precursor. Um, I'm kind of like in a rough spot with my band right now. Um, just because I'm uh, in the situation where I need to replace all the members. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, we could get into that a little bit later. But um. With, so my sound might change to more of like a speed metal sound versus the heavy metal sound that um uh the band has right now. Mm -hmm. But if I were to make a sound a movie soundtrack out of the songs that are now, <laughs> um, so the band the concept was really about the fight against good versus evil, which is the most 
um I don't know how to call it the the fight that's been going on forever I guess Yeah, eternal. <laughs> yes and um I'm like as, as far as like metal and rock it's always about like devils and demons and evil forces and I'm like what about fucking angels angels are fucking badass they're fucking strong they're fucking fierce and in my opinion they're far more powerful than any fucking devil so um that's kind of the concept of the band and the song angel fury is about that the power of uh the angels and the personification of the angels so i had this idea of like um modern fantasy i guess of um kind of in the sense you know lord of the rings where they have the ring and they have to like take it to a certain place but in this case it's not a ring it's kind of like the truth or the um the goodness of the world And kind of be like a Warriors inspired thing where it's like all the band members just like running around the city trying to protect this thing, trying to get it to like heaven or something. I haven't thought it all the way through, but <laughs> and then I like like what you thought of so far. It sounds like a great start. <laughs> and like the demons um, in, in people form, you know, going around trying to fuck everybody up, trying to get at it. And we're like in the journey of trying to get to heaven or whatever you know we're finding out that we are part angels so it's like jumping off of the cliff and my wings sprout, and i'm like oh shit i didn't know i had wings oh. and, or, and you know the demons also revealing more of their demon form and it's just like the fight of like who gets the ultimate control of the people mm -hmm. i don't know who wins <laughs> i love this that's a really good one too Oh my god, so is it going to be CGI or Muppets, though? That's the important question. Uh, probably CGI. <laughs> or I was also, I love the Warriors, how they do, how they do, like, part comic, and then, um, okay. you know, back to real life, and I'm like, that would be kind of cool, too. All right, that's awesome. Um, I love this, and I love that you wanted to make metal about, like, positive forces, too. There's just a handful of bands that do that. and it's always stand out and um for me like if i prefer to listen to those kinds of lyrics because like i'm already living in this hellhole like i need something uplifting so <laughs> you know just thank you um <laughs> to me like um music has been there for me in the best of times but also the darkest times and in the darkest times i love to listen to the songs that inspire me to keep going and there's nothing else in the world like I don't I think if you ask everybody who's a true music lover it's those songs with the positive message that keeps you going and I want to contribute to that because I mean, there's there's enough songs about evilness <laughs> and so like there's not enough songs about positiveness and Um, you know, I'm, obviously I'm not perfect, but I try to be as positive as possible for my own sake. But if I can lift somebody up on the way, um, you know, I'm more than happy to do so. And, and like you said, there's, there's, some, we're living in a hellhole. So. <laughs> like we got that part covered. Like it's um, there's enough of that. <laughs> give, bring me like party vibes. Bring me joy. I'm here for that. Good vibes. That's the vibe I want to be in. Let me be in that vibe. Um, and if you could play a world tour with any three bands alive today, who would you choose? Oh my gosh, dude. I thought about this question for so long. I'm like, I hate you. <laughs> Because, like, um, yeah. I'm like, can I give you three different scenarios? <laughs> um, yeah. so obviously I would love to go for like my favorite bands, Judas Priest and Iron Maiden, like. But I'm like, I feel like that's a little bit too obvious, <laughs> you know, like everybody would love to tour with them. Um, and then, uh, but then I was, I was really thinking, I'm like, no, 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 let, let me get a little bit more deep. And I was like, you know what? I would love to do a girl power tour. So who would I pick? Doro and girl school. Oh. I would fucking love that shit. Just girls, girls in metal. But then also I'm like, fuck. Like, I love those, but at the same time, um, I was watching Mina's interview, and she's like, I want to tour with everybody. And I'm like, oh, my God, I want to tour with everybody, too. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, like, before this whole debacle with my band breaking up and me trying to find new members, um, Haunt was actually taking us under his wing. Um, so I was expecting, I'm like, okay, let's keep working with him, and I can expect 
a tour with Haunt, you know, and any of the bands that are kind of like in that caliber, um, Haunt and Hellfire, they always do stuff together. So I'm like, I would love to go on tour with them just because um, they're just cool people. I've played shows with them before. Um, I really respect them in the, the international metal community. And, you know, the my friends in Saber, I respect them for how far they've gotten. You know, I knew I knew those guys before they were they were just little metalheads, you know, and just to see them blow up. It's amazing. Like, I would love to go on tour with them. And also another local band that I really respect is Entrance. They're also my buddies. I've known them for a really long time. Or Philly, I've known them for a really long time. So I'm like, ah, who do I pick? Like, there's just so many, so many people. And I can give you a reason for why I want to tour with every single one of them. <laughs> you know, I'm going to vote for you for president. That was a very diplomatic answer. <laughs> and uh, why not? So, but um, let's see. Saber, was somebody in Angel Fury or perhaps in your previous band Siren Hex from uh Saber. Why do I feel like you've worked with Saber before? Um well I've known Joel the guitarist since um and Steven the singer. So Steven the singer was in a band with like one of my ex-boyfriends back in like 2013. So that's kind of where I got to know him. And then um Okay, this is where I didn't, think, I didn't think about this, but then Joel um joined a band that my other ex boyfriend was in. They were called Ramit, and I kind of joined in Ramit for a few shows. <laughs> um, I filled in on vocals for them, and we did a song where it was like dual vocals. Mm -hmm. So I get um to work with Joel in that sense. Cool. We were never like in a band together, mm -hmm. but we worked in a band together. <laughs> I love that your two ex-boyfriends were in a band called Ramit and then you know <laughs> yeah and the other one was Skepter um that was a uh, Steven's uh first band oh okay um so um so you from Siren Hex you had Mars on drums and mm -hmm. she was also an Angel Fury and Angel Fury was on K4K Records um, they just recorded us. Uh, they they do their own thing, but we weren't like under a label or nothing. It was a uh, kind of just um like hey, we need someone to record. They're like yeah, we're down. And, you know, we pay them, and then they do all the things. But um, it's not really like a record label. Oh okay, all right. Well, that's got to be useful for uh, people in your area to know about. Um, so okay. Um, looking back. What was a big decision you made? And by the way, if you hear something screaming peekaboo, it's my parrot. Just try to ignore <laughs> that. She can hear me talking and it's making him upset because he's not here. But anyway, looking back on your life, what was a big decision you made that turned out to be a great choice? Um, I'm like, can I get deep with this one again? Yeah. <laughs> um, I think just following my passions. Um, because I feel like in my life, I've always been told, no, you can't do that this way or no, you shouldn't do that. And sometimes it comes from a good place. Um, you know, my parents always kind of discouraged me pr from pursuing art, from pursuing um, my passion for heavy metal because they didn't understand it. And they were like, no, you know, that's not what society wants. You know, they wanted me to be a good member of society. And you know, I don't blame them for that because they want the best for me. But ultimately, you know, what they wanted for me is not what I wanted for me. And the, when I did want to do what they told me to do, when I would try to listen, it just made me miserable. It made me so miserable. And for a few years, I was very lost because I, you know, again, the fight between like what I want and what I should be. And um, it wasn't until I decided, you know what? like me or hate me <laughs> I'm gonna do what makes me happy and this lifestyle makes me happy whether you understand it or not I'm gonna fucking do it and you know look at me 32 years old you know they thought it was just a phase <laughs> mom it's not a phase <laughs> oh my God. and I'm more I'm I'm very involved in my metal community I'm very involved in 
and music I'm very involved in, in a lot of things and that that brings me joy and I love doing it because you know we don't get paid <laughs> we don't get paid to be in these bands we don't get paid to make this music in fact we're we're investing a lot of ourselves into it but at the end of the day that's what makes me happy the same thing goes with like my my leather business um I was working a full-time job I was doing accounting <laughs> and um I was trying to do leather work on the side and you know obviously the account is going to take up most of my time nine to five and then I get home I'm tired and then I'm also trying to do the bands on the side mm -hmm. so my, my business wasn't really getting a lot of attention I was still trying to do it mm -hmm. and then COVID came and I got laid off for my nine to five so then I had a decision um should I try to jump in this full time or should I just try to find another job and um, again, my mom coming from the goodness of her heart, like, hey, you know, you shouldn't just, you know, just get a job. That way you can have some money coming in and you won't have to, you know, be like shitting at every end of the month to pay your bills. Mm -hmm. And then also um, the boyfriend that I had at the time, he also told me the same thing. And I really had to think about it. And I'm like, you know what? I have enough money saved up to pay bills for a month. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give it my all and if I don't make it in a month fuck it I'll go find a job at least my bills are paid and four years later I'm still here so yeah that's so Stevie Nicks of you <laughs> all right fine I'll give it a month and if I'm not you know you know taking off like a rocket then I'll give it up but instead you just take off like a rocket yeah so um in a way I guess this comes down to um like the predicament that I am in Angel Fury right now um so the band we announced it August of 2023 and um we had already been practicing for like almost a year before that but I'm like I'm the type of person I'm like I'm gonna work behind the scenes no one's gonna see anything but when you hear about me bitch it's because I'm fucking ready to fly off and um, so we started getting a lot of attention really fast. The momentum was like, whoa, you know, a week later from announcing the band, we got on the Ellie Gates of Metal Festival. Um, you know, we we opened up for Coven 6669. Um, we uh, Ha hit us up. He's like, hey, you know, I want you guys to do this mini tour with us. So things were rolling in so fucking fast mm -hmm. and everybody had to make a decision, you know, prioritize their life or prioritize the band and we quickly found out that we were not on the same page so we could not move forward how we were moving forward and you know everybody just kind of like did their own thing so at this point um you know I've been having a lot of things going on in my personal life so I haven't really like put the effort into rebuilding yet mm -hmm. but I'm in the same predicament of like okay I'm going to give it my all one more time because, oh, because I'm still booked for a show for the Frozen and Time Fest in June. Ooh, okay. So, so. I don't have a bad, but I have a fest coming up. And, yeah, but you're also telling, like, the entire Metal Girl audience that you need a band right now, so. Yeah. So, so, so anything can work out. Hey, everybody. <laughs> so, right now, um, I, again, I'm doing this thing where I'm like, okay. I'm going to give it my all and I'm going to pour my all to it. And if it works out where I can find the members and we can play this festival, fuck yeah, let's fucking do it. And if it doesn't work out, then I'm just going to move on to something new. But it's not going to be the end of me as a heavy metal vocalist. Right. I'm going to do something else. But as far as like the band Angel Fury goes, I guess. <laughs> um, Where is that festival? That one's in Fresno. Okay. It's in June. June, uh, I think it's the 22nd. It's a very new festival. The first edition was last year. Um, this is the second edition of it. And um, I'm hoping that it keeps growing. You know, it's really hard to throw festivals. So, you know, Trevor has a really good head on his shoulder. So I'm like, hopefully it keeps growing every single year. Oh my gosh, good luck to those people. It's um, uh, Leadership is such an admirable and underrated quality these days. Like, oh man. Tell you what. Uh, all right i'll try to stay on track here Sorry, well, I love getting off track. <laughs> okay, well in that case <laughs> no it, but it is true because a lot of people like they want the benefits and they want the ego of being a leader without actually providing the solutions 
that we need. Yeah. I think that's what happened in the band. We had one member where he's like, no, this and that, and I want this and I want that and I want that. And we're like, okay, we're down to work with you, but tell us, show us the solution, give us the options. Mm -hmm. Like you're not giving us nothing. You're just mad and want things your way, but like you're not making it easy for us to decide. So if you know you're not gonna lead us, then just take take a step back and let the leader do its thing. And you know, obviously a leader, I think a good leader is supposed to look out for the well-being of everybody. And when you're in a big group, of course, not everybody's gonna get everything they want perfectly all the time because we're all different people. But a good leader is going to try to um, meet everybody in the middle. Oh, I love that we're having a chat about leadership in this episode. Um, I'm an Aries, so. <laughs> I feel like leadership also just like, um, like never really happens by like someone's choice. It's just like, they're like, hmm, this like thing is missing. Like, like Deb and Lady Beast. Like there's nothing about her that's like egotistical. She just like was like, this thing should be here and so she built mm -hmm. it and then now we all like recognize like deb is a leader and like i don't know if she knows oh like, well i know. think internally she does know and then everybody else respects her for it and that's what makes a good leader you're not egotistical about it you're not like oh because i want to be the main one it's like no you just have these ideas you want to implement them you have the vision to carry them on because some people they just kind of look like like, oh, they just see the next step. Mm -hmm. Leaders see the big vision and then they kind of spoon feed everybody the little steps as they go. And um, I guess not everybody has like that full long-term vision. So yeah. we need somebody to like kind of keep us on track, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Like long-sightedness is just like a, another like highly prized quality um, for me and like people I guess and it's uh, also very rare so like leadership and uh, long-sightedness um, since you watch this the series like consistently you'll recall an episode where <laughs> I was talking to um, the singer of Clay Morian about like um, early crushes like you, when you're like 13 um, oh I haven't watched that one yet oh okay you gotta oh, tell me okay so uh, <laughs> perhaps we'll have this derailing conversation it kind of ties into this like I would say like my like realization that like men were attractive was when um like when I saw Qui-Gon Jinn in Star Wars and I was like wow he's like like so leaderly and like long-sighted and wise and gentle and like this is a man and so do you remember the first time that <laughs> this is such like a stereotypical <laughs> question but <laughs> who was your first crush <laughs> oh man I, i'm like okay so th this is kind of funny because i was just thinking about this yesterday but um when i was little um i had like this group of cousins there was like five of us and this is where like all the boy bands and girl bands were coming out like back in the 90s and so um <laughs> Uh, so if we would all pick like a character you know sailor moon we all picked a character the disney princess we all picked a character but it's like you couldn't pick the same character as the other cousin you had to so if you didn't pick the one that you wanted right away you kind of got the leftovers right right right, right. yeah so, so, so when sailor came... scout were you which sailor scout were you uh sailor mars i mean no 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 sailor mercury so sailor okay, mercury I was sailor sailor Jupiter. Mar what spice girl were you scary spice i was posh i fell oh. for posh <laughs> I never got the ones that I wanted. Like I, I loved Baby Spice for some reason, and I got stuck with Scary Spice. I mean, but I look at it now, and I'm like, no, no, I am Scary Spice. <laughs> and then when it came to Backstreet Boys, I got the leftovers. So my crush was Brian. <laughs> so he was my crush, and I'm like, I didn't even like him, but he was my crush. <laughs> oh my god, fucking Backstreet Boy leftover. <laughs> <laughs> And I look at them now, and I'm like, oh, they're all ugly. <laughs> but, but yeah. No, they are, though. <laughs> so... <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Okay, so um, I, uh, 
I wanted to bring up that you there's some man that writes on uh, Metal Archives and he compared you to Zorro Pesh. And when I hear this, I always think that this person doesn't listen to enough metal. Like when like they only go for Zorro Pesh, it's like there's so many other people that she sounds like. So I... um <laughs> Like, and, um, oh, darn, I kind of forgot what I was going to say about that besides that. But, oh, well, I guess I just wanted to say something about your singing, uh, that you are a pretty singer in metal. Like, you have a pretty singing voice, and it's still, like, rough and wild. It's kind of like Bonnie Tyler, still sounds pretty, but she's, like, rough and wild. And um, also, I wanted to compliment you on your rhythm. Oh, really okay. outstanding. I mean, I can't, like, sing it my rhythm right now. But, like, um, yeah, I just wanted to point that out and um, highlight that so that people that are, like, going to go check out some of the Angel Fury demo singles can uh, take note of that. Because I'd love to hear more people mind their rhythm in metal. Yeah. Well, so, anyway, what is a performance memory that you will never forget? I mean, wait, going a little bit back to backtracking to the Doro Pesh comments, mm -hmm. which that's kind of a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> any any female vocalist in heavy metal, everybody always compares her to Doro Pesh, which is an honor in itself because we all love Doro. Like she is, she is the queen, <laughs> undisputed queen, and of course. Compare me to the queen, you know, little me. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, it's like, none of us really sound like her. <laughs> oh, yeah. In reality, you know, like, yeah, maybe we got the grittiness. We got the heavy metalness of it. But yeah. we're all our own people. So when somebody compares me or compares anybody to Doro Passion, I'm like, you haven't really dug deep. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of sounding like a, a bit of a poser. When yeah, because I'm like... You know, um, I think so somebody else is like, oh, you know, I don't know if it was in that same review because I, I did read that one recently. Um, did they bring up acid in it? No, um, they did bring up crossed hearts, which is another great. Oh, crossed hearts! I I love Carly, but one, Carly but does you know, not sound anything alike. Yeah, it's like, um, <laughs> and then somebody was saying like, oh, they brought up savage master in relation to mean mistreater and i was like there is nothing similar between those two bands singers like savage master never uses vibrato there is no instance in her singing ever and yeah i was just like what like you know what the best um comparison that i've heard of uh stacy savage was of um dc lacrow La Lacro, DC Lacro. Yeah, I'm like, oh my god, that is an amazing com okay. um comparison. Okay. Um, where you're like, Are you down? <laughs> yeah, I I do be taking my notes. Um, yeah. So um, a, a little thing about me, little fun fact, I am fucking obsessed with like the old school metal ladies, and for many years I ran like this anonymous page where I would just post up like old videos and music of like females in the 80s like late 70s 80s and er very early 90s that just encapsulated the the metal sound the heavy metal rock and roll sound and kind of gave us the platform in which we stand on today so I'll, I'll share that with you there's a ton of cool fucking bands nobody's ever heard of and um I stopped running it in 2018 but I'm like oh, I should bring it back <laughs> yeah bring it back the people need education um yeah. I there's of Doro <laughs> yeah, I like, oh my god, so I did this whole humongous um, art installation where I built, a, like, a literal temple to rock goddesses, and it's all, like, like you know, all the older rock goddesses. This is my new rock goddess collection. Oh, yeah. And a man wrote to me and asked me if I'd ever heard of a band called Warlock, and I was just like... Never? Who? What? I was just like, man... Like, man, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> hey, I was just like, like, you offend me with your question, so I'm not even going to answer. Like, Thanks. Yeah, I have. <laughs> you don't think I am, first of all. <laughs> and we're, we're living under a rock. 
<laughs> Name three female fronted bands. All right. So <laughs> and, and you know what? Um adding another I'm like, oh, dude, I'm such a yapper. I'm sorry. <laughs> but no, yeah, this is a like a talk show. So yap on. So Doro obviously was um well when I was getting into like more extreme music, um, I think like in the two thousands it was um uh, what's that fucking band? Uh Arch Enemy. Mm. Arch Enemy was like popping off. So there was a lot of like female growlers out in the scene, and that's kind of was my besides the punk stuff, as far as like metal goes, the growlers were kind of um my first introduction to extreme heavy like metal vocalists, which um total respect to them. I could never do what they do, mm -hmm. but it's just personally not my style. Yeah. So when I did hear Doro Pesh for the first time in my life, I was like, you know, like, I fucking yeah. died. Yeah. <laughs> so. I'm like, um, totally understand that. It was like when I wanted to like get started with rock music, everybody was like, well, we don't want to be Paramore. And I was like, why are you saying that to me? I don't want to be Paramore. Like, what do I want to do with Paramore? <laughs> okay fine i wanted to do iron maiden anyway do you guys listen to that <laughs> like, i worked out for everybody <laughs> <laughs> no it was just like vagina oh it's gonna be like paramore and what was the other one that they um they said oh well we don't want to be avril lavigne now that one i can understand and then um <laughs> and then the and then uh flyleaf but actually flyleaf was good so, um, but like not still not music I wanted to make. And um, there's like a couple of Instagrams out there that are like metal queens or like queens of metal. And they're always all growler vocalists. Yeah. And then they're all, all like, I mean, I'm like, again, I'm like, I don't want to sound like a hater because to each their own. And it yeah. takes a little. They're not goddesses. They're just a different genre. But I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm oh. like, I'm like. We are not the same. Yeah. We are not the same. <laughs> so. Yeah. So then after I discovered um Doro, that's kind of where I just dove so deep in trying to find these musicians that were in the same vein. And that's how, you know, I got sucked into this whole learning about all these other like female, female musicians, you know, mainly vocalists. Um, But, you know, there's a, uh, the Joe Benches, the, you know, other, um, instruments. <laughs> I'm like, that's the word I'm looking for, instruments. Um, and my personal favorite, uh, female vocalist of the 80s is, um, Lynn Renaud of Messiah Force. Oh. Oh. Yeah. So when, when I found her, I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is it. This I is fucking. cover of her music. And, um... She actually saw it she fucking oh, saw it and she commented on it and she's like wow like you sing better than I do now <laughs> oh man I like um I almost wore my messiah shirt uh messiah force shirt today but I oh you should have I know I should have for this episode rats <laughs> um also um it's got it's like kind of a similar name to angel fury um so okay what is a performance memory you will never forget i opened up for doro pesh at the whiskey a go-go in 2017 and it was my first big show ever it was my first time performing at the whiskey and it was my first big show and it was for the metal queen i got to meet her backstage i can cry still thinking about it i will never forget that experience and i'm like wow i'm so lucky i'm so lucky i'm like i manifested that shit <laughs> and you know and then like in the future you'll do a tour with her yeah and you'll always treasure instead like that little like whiskey go-go moment it was like nina was talking about like the first time she saw people singing along to her music or um yeah. like the when you like get the first one like the first time you hear your voice recorded or like you know your first instrument or something like that about the yeah, climb. actually um when, when I was listening to Mina's interview I was like oh my gosh yeah, that's so good because I have a memory like that too where um again it was at the whiskey but it was on a different occasion 
um we're opening up for grim reaper that time but um we had this this song in siren hex called hexed which was like our most popular song and when when it comes to being a local band i don't expect nobody to know any of the songs you know they'll know the title of the song but they, they won't um know the lyrics i mean most of the time they won't even know the songs but <laughs> and we were on stage performing that song and we can hear people singing along and that was um there's actually a recording of it um we have it on youtube i'll send it to you but i yeah. was like yeah because i was like what the fuck people are fucking actually singing it and um, I'm I'm really big into like interacting with the crowd when I'm on stage. You know, I love to make them scream. I love to make them, you know, chant shit back at me. But this one, like they did it all on their own. So I was like, oh my God, like what the hell? <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely send me that link. I'll put it in the show notes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I will do that. Um, and then, um, uh, do you have any new announcements? Uh, yeah, a new announcement. Um, I'm looking for a band. <laughs> I'm looking for members that are go-getters, that want to tour, that want to travel, that want to play festivals, that are just 100% priority into the music. Um, I have two guitarists already um, lined up. Um, I'm mainly seeking out a bassist and a drummer. Okay. So. Yeah. If you guys want to join the Angel Fury team. <laughs> okay. and is it um gender specific or boy? No, not at all. I'm like, my dream at the beginning was an all girl band, but it's, unfortunately there's so few of us out there. Mm -hmm. And um the ones that do exist, there are already like 10 million bands. Yeah, especially for a drummer, female mm -hmm. metal drummer. Yeah, so um that that was another thing that I I was gonna thank you for for like uh, having this channel because even though there's far more um, female metal musicians nowadays it's still very taboo mm. and um, you know on a bill of a festival of 200 musicians maybe like five of them will be female mm -hmm. so the ratio like come on girls we need to bring up that fucking ratio <laughs> yeah. band together women get on the pirate ship Take yeah, it over. On, on the Zed Yago SS, right? That is right. Captain Amy. <laughs> Captain Amy. Come on, we're going. And then, and, uh, I'm just like imagining like what everybody's jobs would be on this boat. But um, <laughs> no, um I'll be the yapper. <laughs> the official yapper. <laughs> <laughs> you could be the heckler, though. Like, oh, yeah. you could yell at the other boats that we're going to commandeer. And like... <laughs> <laughs> just pee, pee like playing pee on everybody. <laughs> like, <"Pee> everybody. Um, <laughs> so, um, okay, well, where can we listen to your music and how can we follow what you do? Um, well, the the singles that we recorded, oh my god, I have another story about this. <laughs> all right, tell us. Do it now. So, um, everything is, is is available on like all the streaming platforms, the Spotify, the YouTube, um, Amazon, anywhere um all of them but um right when angel fury disbanded and i'm talking about this um i talked about the guitarist who was very egotistical he was bullying me to take all the music down like it was it was getting pretty bad and i was like what the hell like aren't you proud of what we did aren't you proud of this and he was really bullying me and to the point where i had to block him on everything because it was getting like we were about to fucking really fight, you know, Damn. but yeah, but uh, it would have been easy for me to just take it down, no. right? But I'm, I'm, I'm proud of this, you know, like yeah. eventually I'm going to move on from this and then I'll delete it. But for now, you know, this is all I have to show. Like we put a lot of work into it over a year of yeah. our time, money, passion went into this. And for you to just be like, well, I wrote the ribs, they're mine. And I'm like, well, play the riff somewhere else, bitch. Like, I don't care. Like, no one's going to stop you. But, um, yeah, this guy was really bullying me, and I do not associate with him. And I really had to fight him to keep this music up. So go into it while it's still up. Yeah. <laughs> he I'm actually did. did fight him. You know, yeah. people, like, like, music means so much to people, like, the people that listen to whatever. And, like, like you put all of this psychic energy into Angel Fury being a positive force 
And then for this guy to be like, well, there's an aspect of this that belongs to me. First of all, dude, everybody already illegally downloaded the song. So, like, it, you can't <laughs> change it now. It's out there. <laughs> Secondly, um, like, that song, that music matters to other people. And, like, it also especially matters to women to, like, have examples of, like, different styles of singing. Like I just said, like, your rhythm and the way that you sing metal and you do it pretty is, um, like, important and a good, in, like, piece of variety in what women can do as an example. And so it's, like, it's just much, much bigger than his riffs. Right? And I'm like, dude, all the shows we got, we didn't get them because that festival that we got, the guy didn't... Okay, so let me tell you a story about the LA Gates Seattle. <laughs> because um, a lot of people will ask me, oh my god, how did you get on that festival? You know, like, it was so unexpected for us and for everybody around. And I was like, the promoter just sent me a message on Facebook. <laughs> he sent me a message and asked me, like, hey, do you got 30 minutes of music? Like, yeah. Like, okay, you want to play this festival? yeah so um but it's kind of like my my whole thing and I always tell everybody the power of networking is I cannot even explain the power that it fucking has mm. and I'm just the type of person that I, I love I love going to shows local shows um, bigger concerts, festivals, um, nationally, internationally. I'm just that person. And I've met so many people along the way. And these, when you're a good person, you know, like I'm not trying to like pat myself on the back or anything, but generally I think I'm a pretty easy, easygoing person. You know, I like making friends. I like making connections. I like helping people out where I can. And people remember that. And they also remember when you're a fucking bitch. So, <laughs> but, but people remember, they, they remember me from past bands. So when this promoter approached me, I'm like, I don't even remember where I met him, mm -hmm. you know, but obviously he remembers me and he remembered my talent to have faith in me, to put me on this fucking festival without even hearing none of my music yet. He had that faith in me. So, you know, um, it really angered me to him, for him to try to, like, tear me down. And I'm like, okay, you can take the songs, dude, but the magic is me. Mm -hmm. And, um, like, honestly, I don't even know what his name is, so. Exactly. And I'm like, who are you again? You're nobody. And, and you know, oh, this is so stupid. I'm like, I'm over here getting mad all over. <laughs> but um, he said that the reason why he wanted to take it down was because he didn't want me making money off of his music. Nobody's making money. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, actually, I made seven books off of bad cat. <laughs> <laughs> Mail him a dollar bill. <laughs> okay, when the band, um, we were still in the band doing everything selling our merch actually selling the singles on Bandcamp. we were making a good amount of money and when the band broke up i split up the money mm -hmm. and i gave everybody their chunk it was a good chunk you know i mean considering the fact that we don't make any money i think it was like 100 bucks each mm -hmm. you know yeah which is i've never gotten paid off for no band so you know that that's pretty good but um after that i put everything for free because i'm like okay you know i don't have any merch to sell I still want the music to be out there. It's going to be free. But, you know, on Bandcamp, people could still send money if they want to. Yeah. So I need seven bucks. So He's probably never going to watch this. He ain't, he ain't getting none of that money because he put me through a lot of grief. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't deserve my seven bucks. <laughs> um, and also, you know, thanks for being transparent about that. I'm sure there's a lot of other people out there in bands that are like, um, I don't know, that's usually pretty obscure, opaque. Um, like, how much money do people make off of it? And, like, I don't know, wasn't it, like, uh, I don't know, somebody said rapping don't pay the bills. Like, everybody's got, like, a job as, like, uh, well, I don't know, cool job. Leather workers, tattoos, hair, all kinds of stuff. So, um, people do it because they love it. And also, I, I feel like... Um, it's also a testament to how good Angel Fury's, I mean, I don't know if the pr promoter really didn't hear it. Like, I, maybe he did listen to Oh, it. we had nothing out there yet. We hadn't even played our first show. Wow. <laughs> like, we had our first show booked, which I also got with um, 
uh my my friend um Tyler from Leather Duchess um mm -hmm. he throws his 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 own personal show he calls it Leather Fest and I had been a vendor for the past show and I had recommended bands for his show and then the next edition I was like hey you know my band's gonna be ready would you mind putting us on the show and he's like fuck yeah you know he put us on so we had that one show booked so we were gonna do something but as far as music we still had not released anything we had not recorded so oh okay I was gonna say because like honestly all I'd have to hear is the two singles that Angel Fury has out there and I would have been like yeah I want you to play in this lineup but, yeah because <laughs> the music is so good um, and like I said, distinctive for its rhythm and your, um, I keep using the word pretty, but I do think it's, uh, like the right word for it. It's nice to hear someone sing metal pretty. I love melody. Like I'm a sucker for melody. And I think that's what hurt me the most when he's trying to take his music down, saying that those are his songs that he wrote them. And I'm like, I wrote my melodies and I wrote my lyrics and how dare you say that nobody else, everybody wrote their own parts, mm -hmm. you know, so how dare you say that nobody, nobody did anything, um, you know, it's just like a slap in the face, but I'm like, you know what, I did it once, I'll do it again, and where the fuck are you, and where the fuck am I, only time will tell, so. Yeah, well, it's not, it's probably not in an interview, so anyway, uh, <laughs> all right, you know how this game is. Not with you. <laughs> Never will be, um, so. You know how the game's played? Two vinyl. You pick. Oh my god! Ah, how dare you! <laughs> <laughs> god damn it! Okay. You must pick one. <laughs> so, the first time I heard Coven, Wicked Woman, like I don't know, it just did something like chemically in my brain. However, Santa is like my bitch. She is my girl, and if if I couldn't be reincarnated to any heavy metal singer, it'll be fucking Santa. <laughs> okay, so I, I guess that's gonna be your choice. Yes. Okay. You know, I um I liked Evil Woman when I first heard it, but the one that got me for Coven was White Witch of Rose Hall. I was like in my kitchen, and it came on on my Siri, um, and I was like had like a spatula in my hand and all of a sudden I was just like moving like I was possessed I was like yeah like the piano and that song I mean, it's so like the whole album I just feel so static yeah and and then um then I heard that compilation album where she's like a naked fairy on a pentagram on the cover and so um and I heard a uh, midnight man and I was like you're like, I love you. <laughs> I was just like, okay, well, um, I need it a... anyway. All right, so Donna Summer, or LA Witch. Ah, oh, dude, I I love disco, so I'm gonna go with Donna Summer. <laughs> I that, that's one of my um, people are like, oh, what kind of music do you like? Or people think that I only like metal just because I'm so into it, mm -hmm. but I'm like, I love all types of music and disco. Like has a oh, it has like a chokehold on me. <laughs> I think actually just yesterday Donna Summer came up in a conversation where like it wasn't even because I had her vinyl out. It was just like one of the other rock goddesses was like, I'm a big Donna Summer fan. I was like, all right. Yeah, and, and I know disco's uh what what's that saying from um Detroit Rock City? Disco blows dogs for quarters. I know that, I know that, but <laughs> but I still love it. <laughs> Oh, so, oh my goodness. I was, like, sitting in a bar this one time, and the girl next to me, who was, like, very nice, um, she, I was like, yeah, you know what would be cool, like, to hear some disco metal, and she's like, oh, that's a thing, disco metal exists, and I was like, it does? Like, w well, who, who are the disco metal bands? Yes. And she told me, like, corn, and I was like, <laughs> the things I like to, I was like, now, nah, wait a minute. <laughs> I mean, there there is certain bands that have like the songs with like the the like the disco icon. Um, well, I'm talking. I guess they're still metal, but like I'm I'm thinking of Mad Max. Um, fuck, what's that fucking song? Um, 
I have to send it to you. But they have more like of like the disco drums in it. Mm -hmm. So it gives the song like a more uppity beat. It's still metal. But... Okay. That sounds awesome. Uh, and of course, Kiss. Kiss. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I Was Made for Loving You has actually probably always been my favorite Kiss song aside from Love Gun. But um... oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Just keep going. All right. <laughs> Bonnie Tyler or girl school? Girl school. I mean, Bonnie, I love you, but nah, dude, girl school, like, ah, uh, they are the ultimate. Like, my my ultimate dream is to have a band like girl school of like just strong women that are with each other through the decades, just playing music. And who was it? Um, I forgot which one of them it was. I think it might have been Anid or Kelly. I don't know which one it was, but um. Where they were like, you know, what, what, when people ask you, uh, like, how do you make music as a girl or something? Like, it was like a stupid ass question. And she's like, well, when I'm playing my instrument, I don't go and think, well, I'm a girl. So how should I play? You know, she's like, dude, I just fucking do it. Like, what the hell? I got to find it. I got to send it to you. Dude, I got to send you so much shit. <laughs> yeah. But it was like the perfect answer. It's like, what the fuck? Like, it like blows my mind, honestly blows my mind oh man yeah there's, like, there. there's like there's like a limit to what i can say on this channel but i'll, I'll follow up about that um <laughs> and also <laughs> girls do have balls by the way like joan jett said girls do have balls they're just smaller and a little higher up <laughs> um plus we got like tits and ass and like all kinds of stuff hair so, <laughs> hair even if it's from a cadaver, I don't care. Can't grow it, sell it. So uh, this album has my favorite girl school song on it. Yeah, right. Oh, dude, I oh, yes, yeah, right. I think all all of those songs are kind of just. I'm like, man, that's how I feel. Yeah, thank you for making that fucking music. Right. Oh, I gotta grab one more here. Let's see. I'm gonna stick. Stick. Tina Turner or Dusty Springfield? Uh, you know what? I'm more familiar with Tina Turner. And I also just... The way that she sings and dances on stage is unparalleled. I'm like, bitch, how can you do that shit? How does she like... Well, did she not lose her breath? <laughs> I saw her live for my 18th birthday. It was a moment. I got in the car. What's love got to do with it was playing. My mom was like, she didn't tell me where we were going. She just said that it was a surprise for my birthday. She's like, oh my God. Well, who, who sings this song? And I said, Tina fucking Turner. And she said, well, that's who we're seeing tonight. And I was like, oh, no, no. So, oh, how was it? How was the concert? Oh, my God. My eyes were glued to her. I don't even know if I blinked. It was just incredible. It was like seeing like a diamond just moving around on the stage because of course she's like really sparkly but she's like she's so animated yeah and like the hair has its own direction that it's moving in. <laughs> the hair is <just> being. <laughs> yeah and it's just like all of its little tips like move you know <laughs> actually that was my best <laughs> tina turner wig impression i've ever done in my life <laughs> but yeah and yeah and she just she was high kicking and she was stomping and everything oh my gosh it was so amazing and it was oh, like, do it. because it was like <laughs> it was just like whoa she's real um but <laughs> the, probably the only song that most people know by dusty springfield is son of a preacher man mm -hmm. um, which i also adore all the old school um country divas um loretta and um tammy and obviously dolly i love them anytime i listen to them i just like want to cry and i feel nostalgic for the yeah, country and <laughs> the music is also really um the themes of the songs are like i i don't think it's true for like modern country like modern country it doesn't it's not as specific in its themes as those songs are. Like, um, 
there's this one song that I've been listening to like on repeat on my Siri in my apartment all day, which is like very unhealthy. It's a long, long time. Um, I can't think of the name of the artist right now, but um, it's like definitely a song about like unrequited love and a friendship. And it's like a horrible thing to listen to all day, but it's just such a beautiful song. The melody has such an, a surprising resolve. So um, anyway, Joan Jett or Pat Benatar. Oh, why do you do this? I don't know. It's fun. Because <laughs> I'm like, I have much respect for Joan Jett. Like she, she broke so many barriers for just women, and just her fight and her struggle is so admirable. But I'm like, oh, I love Pat Benatar's voice. <laughs> uh, 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 oh my gosh. I'm like at this point, I'm just gonna like close my eyes and like, pick one. <laughs> Um, you know what? If I were to encapsulate one of them, I'd probably go with Pat Benatar. Okay. Just because I I love I love her voice, and I wish I could sing like her. <laughs> um, she uh, this album has "Suburban King" on it, which is like such a weird song, but it's actually one of my favorites. Oh, um, let's see. Okay, the uh, the Wizard of Oz. What's the name of the lead actress? um red hair girl uh she's an icon um damn it and well i can't think of her name right now either which is like super weird it's on the tip of my tongue but look, um look, i can't move on without this okay okay yeah google the omnipotent one will tell us all um judy garland oh my god yeah judy garland <laughs> who like after the movies did all of those like a big band kind of theatrical dinner in a movie uh stage performances and like toured um she had a daughter liza <laughs> thank you thank you liza minnelli so pat benatar says that when she went and saw liza minnelli perform live was the moment that she realized that was her life's calling really yeah and <gasps> also Jinx Dawson has said in interviews before that she um, thinks that contemporary singers, um, I don't know if she was specific to rock and metal or if she just meant more generally, but she said that they're not influenced enough by acts like Liza Minnelli, who had like all this projection um and just like bigness to everything like bruce dickinson is like so influenced by liza minnelli <laughs> I, feel, I feel like i'm like that i'm like Whoa. <laughs> so everybody go go watch uh some liza minnelli and judy garland uh, hi. today to honor jinx the eternal one um mm -hmm. But yeah, but that's it for today. I mean, this is probably like the longest episode ever, but it was also <laughs> super funny. And um, got to hang out in person soon. I know. Let me know whenever you come to LA. Oh, and also, I was hoping to have your bootstraps done by oh. today. Unfortunately, I couldn't. But I I'll do be sure. have, um, I, I'm going to do a photo shoot with Demonatrix Photography in Barcelona. When I go there for an exhibit that I'm doing at the European Museum of Modern Art, and I wanted to wear the bootstraps in that, but that's in June. So oh okay, yeah, so yeah, those fun. should be shipping out in the next few days. So <laughs> okay. yeah, no worries. Uh, are you going to Legions of Metal? Um, unfortunately, not this year. You know, I've gone to every single edition since like 2014, and I think this one's the first time that like I'm not gonna go. <laughs> well, like. It's kind of a good thing because it's it shows that there are now so many um like US festivals um that one can like pick between them to see new wave of traditional heavy metal bands in the US and uh, instead of it being like there's like one you know so yeah and then also too I'm like I would love to go to all all of them but um right now since um you know, I'm still trying to grow my business mm -hmm. and I have the freedom to take off whenever the fuck I want, but just mm -hmm. the money's not quite there yet. You know, when I had a job, you know, I was like, oh, I'm going to get the paycheck. I could kind of like plan ahead. And, but yeah. with this business, I don't fucking know if I'm going to have money this week or next week. 
Right. So, you know, I, I the only one that um I'm planning to go to is House Heroes. Okay. Are you going to House Heroes? No, isn't that like super soon? Yeah, it's like in two weeks. <laughs> yeah. But that's what I do recommend. That one's probably like the fastest growing heavy metal festival in the U.S. for sure. I have to make it sometime. I, I, my like sister lives in San Antonio. Like I really have no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many good festivals out, out here in the U.S. You know, obviously, Legions of Metal needs our support. So if you can fucking go to Legions of Metal, please go. Um, Blades of Steel in Wisconsin, please. If you have the means and you want to see some badass music. um, Two Minutes to Tuss, Tulsa, they're actually coming up pretty quickly. Um, I was like, fuck, if my birthday was not the same day as that fest, I would have I would have totally gone. But... um. What's another? Oh yeah, Frozen in Time in, in Fresno. That's mm -hmm. one that I will be performing at. So if you want to see me, <laughs> that one's a very small one too. So that one's in June. Um, oh, there's so many, dude. There's so many, and props to all the promoters who pour their fucking life into making it happen. Yeah, so much work. Again, we're not making money off of this. It's pure passion. Yeah. All right, babe. Well. I will talk to you another time. Thank you so much for coming on the show. You think you're filling me up. <laughs> Love you. Great to me. I thought it was hilarious. Bye. Bye.